Hello, this is a new episode. We are beginning in our Grace Life Komi podcast. Um, we're going to be looking at um, say yes to the fruit of the Spirit. Um, the fruit of the Spirit happens to be um, very vital for every child of God, and these are virtues must manifest as those who actually have the Lord working on the inside of them. Um, we know the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 2, chapter 5, verse 22 down to 23. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You know, I like the end part of verse 23 which says, against such there is no law. And we all know that in every society you go to, there is no law that is against love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. In fact, the laws support this. We are all in today. We are looking for more tolerant environments. We are looking for you know more peaceful environments. We are looking for more patient people. And you know, so the fruit of the spirit actually cuts across not only the the Christian life but even our society. And so that's why we're going to be looking at this important, very very important aspect and subject in the Christian faith. Say yes to the fruit of the spirit. We we'll trust God for a glorious journey in this whole experience. So listen to today's episode. God bless you. Welcome to today's episode. In today's episode, we'll be looking at patience uh, being inseparable from productive silence. Um, this is a very important um, aspect of patience and uh, workings of patience that we all as new creations need to imbibe in our lives. Now, the desire to prove a point in a hurry, make others understand quickly, clear the air rapidly, and being in the good books of many is in it in many. Yeah. Many of us want to do this. It's our innate character, and um, these are the things that we just, you know, want to live our lives in every day. Um, but naturally, everyone wants to be loved and be in good rapport with others. And because of this longing, man tilts towards the talking side so much. Yeah, we all want to be loved. Everybody wants to be loved. There's an innate desire in us to be loved. You know, that's the reason for relationships. We're actually created for relationships. We're created to network. We're not created to be islands. We're not created to be isolated. You know, so there's this desire to want to relate. There's this desire to want to talk. There's this desire to want to be loved. And this makes us, you know, take a lot of steps. Most of the times we want to clear the air. Um, yet we say, I don't want anybody tarnishing my reputation. We want to clear the air. We want to uh, make others understand what we are trying to say. And, you know, all these desires, I would say they are not strange and they are not wrong and because they are the natural innate desires to be loved and to fellowship and to interact and to network with the human world wired to do what's created to do. Now, although life operates on relationships, if any des- desire to have successful relationship, then one must understand that the majority of persons hear what they choose to hear. And so it's important we hear that you understand this that um yes life operates on relationships you can't remove relationships from life you can't be an island and um, if you want to be an island somehow you see the relationship because you're going to talk to um the person at the, at the market you're going to talk to somebody at the um, bus terminal you're just going to talk to somebody so you cannot just live your life talking to yourself you know you're going to talk to somebody life operates at on the level of relationships but we need to understand this basic thing that if you want to relate successfully with people the first thing to have in your mind at the front of your mind at the side every corner of your mind is that people hear what they want to hear they hear what they choose to hear and based on that they also choose to understand the way they want to understand so most of the time you're trying to tell somebody please understand what i'm saying you're going to have a, a serious challenge because the person is choosing to understand what he wants to understand so it's like you're hitting a rock okay um th- people also understand things from their own perspective and they view life from a point of view that is unique to them and this is one of the things we need to really understand people understand it from their perspective they view life from a point of view that is unique to them so their communication stems from their selfish and um, uh, um, personal de- point of view their selfish and personal desires their selfish and personal understanding this is something we cannot remove from life 
you cannot fight it out of people it's just there it's just there you know so selfishness uh, what you call it self-centeredness whatever it's just there in everybody and people relate to people on this grounds you know and uh, people rapport with people on the grounds of their personal interests and they are also in, and this personal interest this selfishness is all determined by nature and nurture now so um, yes when we are born we are born with only the fear of falling the fear of loud noise all right these are the two fears that we're born with you know but after that you know the environment we live in puts different things into us that will permit them to put into us and then the way we are you know we, our, our, our emotional um, stability is the way our temperament our every of that they also contribute seriously to the kind of person we become so at the end of the day we discover that nature and nurture actually determines how people relate with people it determines the extent to which they are selfish or they are selfless temperamental you know differences also affect all these and also the way people have viewed life over the years experiences and every of that it also determines the way people relate with people now so the first thing we need to understand is that people will relate with you on their selfish note people relate with you on their personal in on the note of their personal interest so if you don't uh, carry this approach towards relationships you're going to get yourself hurt a great deal yeah and you're going to tr- live your life trying to prove a point to people or trying to make a lot of people understand or trying to clear the air and um, the more you try to do that the more you get frustrated because you're actually tr- trying to hit a rock which will not actually produce any result now tr- see to the proceeding Talking could prove unproductive at some, at some time in relationships. The reason for this is that people only get to understand your point of view if they are able to stand on the same plane with you. Yeah, that's one thing we need to understand. People only get to understand your point of view if they are able to stand on the same plane with you. Like they will say, when you are not the one wearing the shoes, you don't know what the person who's wearing the shoe feels. When you start wearing the shoes, then you begin to know what the person who's wearing the shoe feels. And you know, some of the time, people begin to wear your shoe when you are finished wearing the shoe. <laughs> so, as it were, when you're actually wearing the shoe, they were not wearing the shoe, so they were not feeling what you're feeling. Now, when you're done wearing the shoe, they start wearing the shoe, they begin to feel what you feel, what you feel then. And then, they, at that point, their understanding does not really help you. Because like they say, give cold water to a man who is dying of thirst, not the man who has already quenched his thirst. So some of the times when we try to clear the air to people or make people understand, it's because at that point in time we are the ones wearing the shoe and we need them to wear that shoe. But they don't have the time to wear that shoe because there are other shoes that are wearing that are more important to them. And now you're done wearing that shoe and um, you, you, you're done and dusted with that shoe. And then they come wear that shoe and then they begin to like oh now i understand but at that point you don't in quote you may not need that understanding i get what i'm saying so these are the the dynamics of life and we must be able to understand these dynamics all right for us to be able to relate to people um successfully yeah we must understand it for us to be able to relate with people successfully now also people often learn and again understand via experiences so until they get experience the use of words do not particularly particularly make sense so people understand and gain on they learn and gain understanding through experiences so until they get those experiences like i said while you're wearing the shoe you're the one having going through experiences you're the one learning your lessons now at that point you're not wearing the shoe so until they learn by wearing that shoe and gain experience by learning that shoe. And black and truth is that the use of words will not make any sense. <laughs> it's not going to make any sense. You just actually be wasting your words, wasting your energy, wasting your time, and every of that, you know. And you know, some of the times, even when people criticize people, they are criticizing because they're not in the person's shoe. You know, remind me of somebody who once said, was always criticizing people who are getting private jet. And he said he knew the importance of private jet when he flew a long flight for you know about 10 hours or more and he was sat and he's, he's kind of little tall and his legs were squeezed all through the place so when he came out he almost cramped and fell you know and then he understood the purpose you know of you know the private jet so that's where life operates now so you're trying to make somebody who has not learned and understood by experience trying to make such a person understand is counterproductive and it could be very 
frustrating. Um, all right. Now, for successful relationship to be attained, both parties must develop patience. Patience is the ability of both parties to quietly and confidently wait until they both enter into the viewing point of each other. Only then can they understand each other's perspective. And many times, this is achieved via experience. So that's one of the very serious you know, definitions of patience. The ability for both parties to quietly wait until they begin to step into the other people, begin to step into the other person's shoes. Until you get there, you keep quiet. You wait. And you wait confidently until you get into the other person's point of view. Now, until you get there, you cannot understand. And so since you cannot understand, there's no use talking. For both parties, I'm trying to make you understand. You've not got into my shoes. So my trying to make you understand by my words is unproductive. You who doesn't understand and you are talking to me, your words are also what? Unproductive. So for successful relationships to be attained, both of us have to what? We have to quietly, there's no need talking now, quietly and confidently wait until you get into my shoes and I get into your shoes. Now, both of us are wearing shoes. Now, for example, you know, maybe it's um, you know, the, 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 uh, the couple and the wife is wearing a particular shoe, the husband is actually wearing a particular shoe and the, the, the husband is speaking from his own shoe, what is feeling, the pain is feeling in his shoe. He's a, he's a male, he's a male. The female cannot feel that pain, are you get what I'm saying? Now, the female is also speaking for her pain and she cannot feel that pain. Yeah, we cannot feel that pain. Now, but there comes a common ground where you, you may not actually, as it were, enter into your shoes, but some experiences in life will give him something that is like a taste of your shoes. Are you get what I'm saying? And then he can now come to terms with what you are going through. Until we both get there, we have to be quiet. Because if we keep engaging words, we may end up using words to our own detriment. And that may further destroy the relationship. Remember, when words are spoken, they cannot be retracted. Just like when egg is spoken, it cannot be good and made back. So when words are spoken, they cannot be retracted. And so if you begin to use words where you have not got into the other party's shoes, you may say things that the person may live with. And when you get to that person's, when you start wearing the shoes, you may not be able to retract those words and that could further destroy relationships. So we have to be patient. Wait. We will put them into each other's shoes. All right. Productive silence is silence backed up with faith in God, faith in God's word, and faith with prayers while one does his own business and keeps at his tax, working till he produces results. Get what I'm saying now we're looking at it from a relationship point of view and life is life is built on relationships whether people relationships with people you know or people you don't know life is still built on relationships now so for you to be able to um, attain success with productive silence it, it, it's you have to build on God's word you have to have your foundation on God's word now you have to stay in the place of prayer and you have to keep at your tax. Now, so, why I'm in my shoes and you don't understand what I'm feeling in my shoes? Instead of frustrating myself, trying to make you understand my words, and maybe at the end of the day, hurting you and hurting myself, I do what I keep at God's word. I keep on praying and I continue with my business. Now, while I do that, I allow the Lord work on me and work on you. So, in the fullness of time, when possibly you start wearing my shoes or wearing something that is like my shoes by that time i would have gone far with my business and when you start wearing the shoes you can begin to understand why i was behaving the way i was behaving then and then you begin to come to terms with me at the end of the day i didn't destroy the relationship i didn't hurt you i didn't hurt myself all right so productive silence is the strength of the scent why he or she exercises patience. Productive silence is our strength. 
for the new creation, for the born again child of God. But don't you silence is our strength while we exercise patience. You don't stay patient talking. You don't stay patient trying to make everybody understand. Even Habakkuk about two says the vision is for, uh, at, for an appointed time. At the end, it shall speak and not lie. What does that mean? At the beginning, it looks like it's lying. So trying to make everybody understand when it actually looks like it's lying. Are you get what I'm saying? Is a waste of words. Stay on God's word. Stay in the place of prayer and keep on your job. Keep on your tax. Stop trying to make people understand. Stop trying to clear the air. Stop trying to tr- stop trying to straighten people. You know. All the numerous things we try to do just to keep relationships intact. Stop trying that. Stay on God's word. Stay in the place of prayer. Keep on your tax. Why? Because that's our strength. The strength of patience is productive silence. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15 says, For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness, and in confidence shall your strength be. You see that? In quietness and in confidence shall your strength be. So while we are waiting on the Lord, while we are patient, we would only be able to get strength to remain patient while we are quiet and confident in God. Despite all the hula balloons happening around us, all the distractions, all the everything, noises going on around us, would only remain in patience when we keep our what? Quietness and our confidence. So keep quiet. Keep your confidence in God's word. Keep your confidence in the truth that God answers prayers. And keep on your tax. First Thessalonians 4 verse 11 says, And that ye study to be quiet. Ye study to be what? Quiet. The word study there um, in the Greek, actually one of the words that explain the word study there is the word to work. So, quietness is a work. <laughs> he says you study to be quiet. That means you have to you have to work it out. Are you get what I'm saying? You have to study. You have to work out quietness because the natural human is not quiet. Even with the temperaments like the phlegmatic that they say they are very quiet, they are still talking inside. Everybody is talking. So, quietness is not a gift. You have to study to be. Quiet. Say, study to be quiet and to do your own business. That's why, after quietness, the next thing that happens is that you continue your own business. Stay quiet. Continue your own business. Says, and to work with your own hands, as we commanded you. Now, by the time you have studied to be quiet and you do your own business and you work with your own, the actual fact is that you will have no time for what is happening around you. You will have no time to prove a point. You have no time to clear the air. You have no time to straighten people because. Your own business takes all of your time. And your own work of your hand has finished every other time left. And so what's left for you is the little time you can eat, you can rest. As I, Isaiah chapter 30 verse 15 says, in rest, in returning, and in rest. Because after you have done quietness and confidence, and you have done your own business, and you have done the work of your hand, the next you'll be taking off is how to rest. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have the time. And you, 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 you hear people say like they don't even have time for anybody. Don't, he doesn't have time for anybody. No. Do you know he has he has studied to be quiet? Do you know what it takes to study to be quiet? It takes years to study to be quiet. <laughs> it doesn't happen overnight. You know, I talked to my dad once and I was like, I asked him, I said, why is that you're quiet? You're quiet. And he told me something. He said, I know that I don't know everything. So when some when a challenge comes my way, what I first do is to take my time to study it so I get the right answer before I speak. I'm like, okay. So it takes time to be quiet. <laughs> you need to work out quietness. And I started learning how to work out quietness. It's always a difficult task, yeah. But you work it out. When you are drawn working it, you focus on your business and you do the work of your hand. The next thing you think of is to return to the Lord and to rest. <laughs> you you go back, you go back to the Lord and say thank you, Lord, and then you are thinking of how to rest. And with this, you know, you can help a lot of relationships, yourself and the other parties you are dealing with. You know, patience is proof over time, not overnight. Patience is what? Proved over time, not overnight. It's proven over time, not overnight. Now, so in the process of time, taking to prove patience, productive silence is required for faith to produce results. Very important. Since patience is not proven overnight, we need productive silence over time to prove 
our faith for it to produce result. I believe this word has been is going to be very helpful to somebody out there. Learn productive silence, no matter how difficult. It's going to help you. It's going to help people around you. At the end of the day, you have greater and better and more robust relationships. God bless you. out there you've not made jesus your lord and personal savior um i would want to invite you to make this decision is the best decision you can make in your life and i encourage you to do it now if you want to make this decision please say this prayer after me dear lord jesus i come to you today i know that i'm a sinner i know that you died for me and on calvary street you shed your blood to take away my sins jesus i surrender my life to you today i make you my lord and personal savior Because you chose me, I choose to serve and follow all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for you, Lord. I pray for everyone who has made this decision. Thank you for receiving them in the beloved. And thank you for giving them the grace to serve and follow you all the days of their life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. For your love gift of any amount to Grace Life Kami Podcast, kindly use any of our giving channels available, to give in dollars. You can send to Universal Merchant Bank Ghana. Account number, 033-154-551-2013. Swift code, M, B, G, H, G, H, A, C, to give in CDs. Universal Merchant Bank Ghana, you can send to account number, 033-254-551-2017. To give in Naira, you can send to Ecobank Nigeria, account number 554-102-0592. Also, for further enquiries, you can call us on plus 233-54594-7132. Or, send us an email via chimdiohahunaministry at gmail.com. Today, remain ever blessed. Wow. Beloved, thanks for listening to Grace Life Komi Podcasts. We believe that you've been blessed via this episode. We request that you also remain connected to us via our other social media handles on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, and YouTube. We are Grace Life Komi on all these platforms. Also, for more information about the ministry of Pastor Chimdi and Funke Oahuna, kindly visit chimdioahunaministry.org. You can also send us your requests and testimonies via email today through chimdioahunaministry at gmail.com. We are dedicated to feeding your spirit man with spiritual meals that we edify, equip, and engender your growth in the knowledge of God. Remain connected to Grace Life Komi. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Thanks for listening to this teaching. We believe you were blessed listening to this prophetic and life-changing teaching episode. We would like to receive your praise report of your encounter with the Lord through the ministry of Pastor Chimdi Ohahuna. To send in your praise report or make a request, kindly send us an email via chimdiohahunaministry at gmail.com. If you need more information about the ministry and would like to give a love offering today, you can visit our website via www.chimdiohahunaministry.org. Grace to you, Jesus is Lord.